Welcome to today's special presentation on UNESCO World Heritage and its multiple interpretation. Today, we are paying attention to one particular UNESCO World Heritage, which is the site of Japan's Meiji Industrial Revolution. UNESCO stands for the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization that is a specialized United Nations agency aimed at promoting world peace and security through international cooperation in education, science, and culture. In 1972, UNESCO established the World Heritage Convention for the purpose of conserving the outstanding universal value of the most important cultural and natural heritage sites around the world. The establishment of the World Heritage Program was a significant turning point in changing perceptions about heritage, namely by introducing the idea that heritage does not merely belong to one particular nation, but also to the rest of the world and humanity. Hence, the World Heritage Program has become the caretaker of our heritage and emphasizes our shared responsibility and accountability when taking care of World Heritage Sites. As of present, a total of 1,144 World Heritage Sites are listed and they attract visitors from all across the world. Hence, the World Heritage Program acts the intercultural communicator by delivering human history and culture to people from across national borders. This in turn contributes to the peace building process by enhancing mutual human understanding among people from all countries and backgrounds. In 2015, the 39th World Heritage Committee meeting announced that the sites of Japan's major industrial revolution, iron and steel, shipbuilding and coal mine, was to be listed on the World Heritage Registry. However, there are many dissenting voices that were strongly opposed to UNESCO's decision. Why this particular designation of Japan's major industrial heritage sites caused such controversies to arise? First, let's consider how the World Heritage designation of Japan's major industrial heritage sites was interpreted from the perspective of Japanese officials. During the nomination process, Japan emphasized that a series of industrial heritage sites located mainly on the Kyushu Yamaguchi region of southwest of Japan represented the first successful transfer of industrialization technology from the West to a non-Western nation. As a result, UNESCO acknowledged the value of these 23 serial industrial heritage sites as remarkable evidence of the rapid industrialization that Japan had achieved from the 1850s to 1910. In sum, this can be interpreted as a site which documents an instance of glorious industrial achievement. Then, are there any different interpretations of this site? Yes, the major industrial heritage sites are also linked with other stories which took place during the 1940s over the course of the Asia-Pacific War. During the Second World War, Allied prisoners of war, Chinese and Korean individuals were forced to work on some of these 23 major industrial heritage sites, including Hashima Island, under brutal conditions. From the perspectives of those who were forced to work, their painful and traumatic memories 
were inscribed in the Meiji Industrial Heritage Sites. They are concerned. Their stories are being silenced. And while only the sites of UNESCO's outstanding universal value are being emphasized. Hence, these groups raise their voices in order to draw attention to their stories and memories that were stored in this site. As we can see, there are two main distinctive interpretations of the major industrial heritage sites. First, the glorious past which took during the Meiji Restoration period, and the second, painful and traumatic history of those who are first to work that extended throughout the Second World War. How can you resolve these controversies when interpreting the Meiji Industrial Heritage Site? Would it be possible to superpose the two different interpretations at this site? Are there any other examples where two different stories coexist in one World Heritage Site? Yes, there are three examples of World Heritage Sites in Germany, which not only narrate the history of the country's industrial achievement, but also commemorate the history of first labor at this site. The first example is the Rammelsberg Museum. The second is the Ruhr Museum in Zofelein Coal Mine Industrial Complex. And the third is the Falklingen Ironworks Museum. For example, the Rammelsberg Museum displays the photos of the first labors, and the Ruhr Museum provides the detailed records of the first labor which occurred at this site, in addition to exhibiting photographs of the Holocaust survivors. In particular, the Falklingen Ironworks Museum formed a commemorative space for the first laborers through the installation on artistic memorial created by the French sculptor Christian Boltanski. This artistic memorial depicts a grave piled with overalls of the first laborers at this site. Visitors can thereby witness that this memorial empathically portrays the central theme of the museum that helps to evoke the deep empathy for the first laborers. Reflecting such best practices, UNESCO World Heritage Committee recommended that Japan should prepare an interpretive strategy that allows an understanding of the full history of each site. In this regard, Japan promised incorporate appropriate measures into the interpretive strategy to remember the victims, such as the establishment of information center. Afterward, Japan opened the Tokyo Industrial Heritage Information Center in Japan in June of 2020. However, at the 44th World Heritage Committee meeting in 2021, the UNESCO World Heritage Committee expressed strong regret at Japan's lack of follow-up actions after the sites of Japan's Meiji Industrial Revolution were inscribed on the World Heritage List and requested for their full implementation. Hence, the UNESCO World Heritage Committee requested the following actions. First, an interpretive strategy to understand the full history of each site. Second, measures to ensure the understanding that Koreans and others are forced to work. Third, measures to remember the victims. Fourth, the implementation of best international practices. Fifth, dialogue between the concerned parties. In regards to the UNESCO's World Heritage Committee's request, the Korean government displayed their willingness to create a productive dialogues 
with Japan and actively help to improve the Tokyo Information Center. We have learned that it is possible to respect the existence of diverse memories at World Heritage Sites. And in the future, Japan's major industrial heritage sites will become an exemplary role model of a World Heritage Site that is able to respect multiple values, multiple stories, and multiple voices in order to ensure this occurs mutual efforts and communication between the consensus party will be the key starting point towards the creation of mutual understanding, peace building, and meaningful reconciliation. As a part of the World Heritage Strategy, multiple heritage professionals and scholars have recently sought to study and elevate the silenced voices and hidden stories within existing World Heritage Sites, outside of the already well-known narrative centered around their outstanding universal value, such as the stories of indigenous people and enslaved people. Hence, exploring the multiple values, voices, and stories of World Heritage Sites does not take away from their outstanding universal values, but rather enriches the understanding of their multifaceted role as World Heritage Sites. I hope that this short lecture helps you to become an even more interested in understanding the multiple values, stories, and memories related to the protection and interpretation of World Heritage. Thank you.